So Q3, we're gonna have a look at it. I think we saw 92.6 billion uh, dirhams worth of transactions. This is the busiest summer I've experienced in 13 years. I've never known as busy as... as yeah. So on the letting side of the business, 9.7% yeah. up on Q2 this year and 37.5% increase uh, on Q3 2022. Do you think something, there's maybe a change of, of what's to come in the next three or four months? Potentially. Listings are up, viewings are down. So this is all SOP and all SOP data. Let's talk about off plan. Mm -hmm. We had a couple of huge launches. There was three or four big launches. I think Dubai South for me, is one of the most talked about areas, I believe, in our sales department at the moment. I think that area is going to be very, very good for us. Oh, it's, it's going to be huge. I'm excited. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's Taking Care of Business. And I'm going to tell you from the off, we've got a new setup with the mics, and I'm a little bit uncomfortable with how I'm sat at the moment. Just look how straight as back is. Yeah, I'm so used to being sat forward and being told you got to be have your face in the mic, so... If you're watching, forgive any um, awkwardness that's uh, coming through the screen. So Q3, we're going to have a look at it. We're going to see the main highlights from Dubai Land Department. We're going to see from Allsop and Allsop data. We've got Mark, who you all know by now, our managing director. Welcome to the show again. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to delve delve into um, delve into the figures a little bit. So to kick things off a bit, this is the busiest summer I've experienced in 13 years in Dubai. I'd wager a bet probably the busiest you've seen in 15 years yeah. in Dubai and with Allsop and Allsop. Yeah. Um, I think we saw 92.6 billion uh, dirhams worth of transactions. Over, so when we talk summer, sorry, we're talking about July, August and September, uh, which was a 6% rise on Q2 this year and a huge 38% rise on Q3 year on year. On year. So when we're saying about it's the busiest summers we can ever remember, I think it's with good, um, I good found, reason. I, I don't know about you, I found there was more people here. Yeah, it's, annoying, it's very annoying. Um, whether that, that was, listen, it wasn't annoying for us, of course, because it was... Not from a business, but usually you, you coast to work in the summer and you look, yeah, you enjoy the roads. And I, I just found, Paul, I don't know whether people have just thought that they want to spend it, even though it's, listen, it's been, I think every year, you'd always think it's hotter than the previous year when it's not, it's exactly the same. But I found there was more people that, that were here. Yeah. And you look at, again, we, I think we've mentioned a few times with regards to the uh, how busy the hotels were as well. I remember trying to book a hotel and usually you get some great deals and you just didn't get any great deals. And that means obviously that, that the hot, hotels are quite busy. But yet in terms of, from a business point of view, I, I said that the other week about, especially our business as well, it was, it was really smooth, I thought this year, whether it's where we set up, I don't know, but it was, I've never known as busy as, as, as what it was. And again, Good. usually in the, in the third quarter of the year or the summer months, as, as we're talking about, it's a lot less busy than what it usually is. And like, again, I think the increase was significant in terms of year on year, not just in terms of um, bottom line, but buyer registrations, tenant registrations, viewings, which is also a, a massive, um, you can measure how busy an actual business is based on well, let me pull you up on that one a little bit because uh, I'm just scrolling through now on the viewing side. I think I think it was a little, it was a little bit lower. Lettings, uh, so on the letting side of the business, yeah, nine point seven percent up on Q2 this year, yeah, which is quite significant because you usually expect a bit of a drop off in, yeah. in the, the summer months, yeah, and thirty seven point five percent increase uh, on Q3 2022. So that's on the letting side, but on the sales side we actually saw a different story. So we saw a 9.4% increase year on year. Sorry, that's wrong. A 9.4% decrease year on year. Yeah. And an 11.5% decrease uh, from Q2 this year. So talking about how we th what we think is going on in the market and forward projecting Q4, what do you think is happening on the, or what do you think that's showing us on the, the sales side? I didn't listen, I didn't think I'd say this, but I'm going to say it. I I don't know whether there's maybe some type of standoff between whether it be landlords and tenants or in the sales side of things from a, um, a seller and a buyer. Obviously the way the market's been the last, what, three years, it's been all about, we speak about speculative sellers and, and so on and so forth. And I think we spoke about this last week. I think they're still there, but I think buyers now are becoming maybe, and you, you look at our viewing, 
uh, sorry, not our viewers, our listing, we, how many uh, listings we generated over the last two or three months. So and let me interject there just yeah. to give everyone the figures. So on Q2 this year, 16.7% more listings came to the market in over the summer months. Which, and contra- which obviously contradicts what we talk about because we kept going on about, you know, under supply. Under supply. Yeah. People not coming to market or when people do come to market, it is way over what what you know what the let's say the selling price should be. But that just contradicts actually what not contradicts, but it goes against what what's been happening the last two or three yeah, months. It does a little bit. And from my point of view, it's I think it'd be more telling to look at the figures again at the end of Q4. But you never actually do know, do you? We're just our job is to look at the data and to speculate in terms of what might be happening. Listings are up. Viewings are down. That does point to, to some kind of. But you think? Do you think that the? Do you think there is something happening at the moment, or do you just think because it's, it's not seasonal now because we're obviously now in full flow of the last, the last quarter. Do you think something? There's maybe a change of of what's to come in the next three or four months. Potentially, because there's always going to be a point where. It's going to happen. We get to this to the, this yeah. part of the market where yeah. prices do go up to, to such an extent that buyers say, "Well, no, actually, we need to draw a line here. Yeah. Either we don't see the value, or we gen we can't we can't afford to pay." And this yeah. is buyers generally across the market. I think it's still early days, which mm. is why I'm saying that we we could see the information next month because, and I think what we're actually going to do uh, with Alini and Cash, our PR and cons team, is just look more area by area. Because, and we have said this before, it's hard to talk about Dubai as a whole. Yeah. Because we know some communities where we're not even bringing property to the market because there's that much demand and people are still in bidding wars against each other. So that is happening in the market at the moment. But looking at the data, maybe there's other parts of, of Dubai and there's certain pockets of the market where there is a bit more of a standoff developing. And you look at the, the average sale price and average leasing price as well, that's come down. Yeah, I think what's happening there, Paul. I think more and more people now are starting to not not just now. I think it's been happening over the course of probably the second quarter as well, where people now are starting to look further afield. And we've mentioned this a few times. I always I always speak about Mira, Mira Oasis, Town Square, and obviously we get data provided by from from the land department, and the numbers, whether it be reds to the jarries or or transactions that have been done in them areas. They are creeping up every single month. And I think that's what, what's happening. People well, look at Dubai South. So to interrupt yeah. is, is um, for the last quarter, in our top five transacted areas. I think Dubai South, for me, is one of the most talked about areas, I believe, in our sales department at the moment. Maybe for people listening to this in, in our sales team, I think, well, what are you talking about? That's not that's not wholly true. One of the girls in our, um, she's actually working in our Arabian Nights 3 team, and or Arabian Nights 2, Team, sorry, and she's done, I think, around about five or six sales in the same amount of weeks. And it seems to be, obviously, we've grew that team. I think we've gone from two to four in our lettings team and two to four in our sales team. That is something. And again, down that area, obviously, we'll go on to off plan and Jebel Ali, um, the Palm Jebel Ali. I think that area is going to be very, very good for us. Oh, it's, it's going to be huge. But just put it into context of top five transacting areas, even with four people in the team. Mm. Most of our villa communities have eight to ten people in the yeah. team. So to, to be in the be in the top transacting areas, comparing those headcounts tells you how it's much. It's true. We, we said before, Paul, didn't we? About logistically, Dubai was always there was always a stigma around every single area. Stigma around whether it be I don't know Mood on or Town Square because it's at the the other end of the Al Quadro Road. But well, now it's, it's it's 15, 20 minutes from every everything. An area that we harp on about. I'm hard upon the wrong word, but we talk about a lot in terms of a busy market, a high demand market is Jamira Golf Estates. Ten years ago, there wasn't even a road to Jamira Golf Estates. It's ten minutes so, from JBR. Yeah. You know, you get on, on, on Garnall Sap, but it's ten minutes. But again, that's like anywhere. You know, you look at the, the infrastructure or the the plans that were put in place. I think last week they launched the there's a massive renovation on, on Hesse Street. Again, that's only gonna it's only gonna help things that where people think like you say, them areas that we've mentioned are too far away. Is gonna, it's gonna bring forward the time it's gonna take to get to places. If that makes any sense. So all these areas now, I'm, I'm getting really excited about these areas, especially like the likes of of, of um, Dubai South and, and places like that. I think it's gonna be very, very good, not just for us, 
just for the general market as well. Definitely. Um, I'm going to come on to our plan in a second, but just want to refer back to the average prices because I, I know it's something um, people are often keen to keen to hear. So this is all SOP and all SOP data. The, our average sale price in Q3 was 3.489 million, which is an 8.2% decrease on Q2 this year, but a 34.2% increase uh, since Q3 last year. And then on the letting side, the average letting price was 188,953, which was a 17% decrease on Q2 2023, and it put a 12% increase year on year. That's, it. you know, what when you look back at 3.5 million dirham for the average sale price, I remember for probably 18 months, the average sale price for our company never ever went above 2.1, 2.2. And then we hit three, we hit, I think we hit three million. I can't remember when, when it was. And then it just completely jumped. But now, like you said, it's come down slightly now. So yeah, you know, you're looking at the average rental price, like you said, at, at 188. Um, that's always, I remember, like I mentioned about the, about the sales average, the, the, it was the same with the, with the letting space. It was never, never above 110, 120, you know? Yeah, exactly. But I'm going to tee up another piece that we're actually working on at the moment. So if we look at on the rental side, Villa Townhouse pricing, there's a 24% decrease in price compared to Q2 and an 8.7% decrease compared to Q3. Mm. Now we're delving deeper into that to see whether it's a migration of people into, into areas that are maybe further out than what's considered centrally whether it's people migrating back to apartments or we always talk about the population growth, it's an influx of people into apartments, or is it a fact that a three bed in Arabian ranches is worth less now than it was six months ago? So that's one that we, we're working on at the moment and we, we will bring, uh, we will shed some more light on, we'll do a release, we'll probably do, do a podcast on that on its own. And another interesting um, bit of information, that, which again, we're gonna delve into a bit deeper is, and I could be wrong, but I'm going to say it. There's more rental renewals in the market at the moment yeah. than new rental contracts. Well, there is. Which won't surprise a lot of people. Well, there is. Like, like you say, our, our data proves that as well, Paul, which is, that's the first that, that I've seen. Not just in, 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 I don't think it was the quarter, was it? It was, the, it was for the, it was for last month. I don't think it was for the, was it for the quarter? As I believe, yeah. Was it? But, but we'll delve deeper, so we'll, we'll get the yeah, I've never the, seen, we've never seen that before, have we? Which again, might, once we start delving into that, it will, could open a can of worms. Not open a can of worms, but it could, uh, again, going back to what we said at the start of the conversation, is there something happening in the market? And again, all these little bits of these snippets that we're receiving may be pointing towards that way. Yep. So let's talk about Off Plan. Mm -hmm. We had a couple of huge launches, really towards the end of the quarter. If we look at the data for Q3 altogether, I think the secondary uh, still had the dominant part of the market with 53% uh, of the volume of transactions compared to off-plan mm -hmm. 47%. But certainly from the last three or four weeks, it seems like the off-plan market's on fire again. Yeah, there was, I think there was three or four big launches, one being the DIFC Living, which is um, just not far, well, just by the- Just next to DIFC. Just next to yeah. <laughs> By the the Damak building, uh, the what's the Park Heights. Then you had the big one, which was Palm Jebel Ali, which was caused massive noises. And I think if you if you go back fifteen years and you look at the prices that Nikhil um, launched that, there's a significant difference now. I think they launched. I don't think they're doing garden, not uh, water homes. They done water homes uh, fifteen years back, and they're like similar to what you have in the Maldives, but they haven't launched them this time. You had garden homes that were launched at 2.2 million dirhams. That was 15 years ago. Fast forward, I think the the cheapest one that they launched is 18.7 million dirhams. So you can see obviously how the market's moved. You can, but the, the clamor and demand for these properties was, like a lot of people said Dubai was, maybe 16, 17, 18 years ago, maybe around 2008 in terms of, or just before 2008 in terms of, just how busy these developers' well, it, offices are. It just went. It just wasn't. You know, the obviously that, that's the flagship. Nikhil's flagship is obviously the the, the Palm, whether it be Palm Jebel Ali or Palm Jumeirah. But you look at the smaller developers. You like like your Imans. I think they had a, a, a development in JVC. It was the same. It was packed out. Our head of um, head of sales, not sales, but head of um, developer sales. He went there. and It was just absolutely ridiculous. Like we we mentioned that the, the other week when I. I remember when the Address Boulevard, when that launched, 
And it was just, it was absolutely insane. It was exactly the same as what happened two or three weeks ago um, in Palm Jebel Ali and in in, uh, in the IFC. You've also got, listen, it's going to take another 10, 15 years for it to happen, but you've got the IFC 2.0, which is a 14,000 square, sorry, 14 million square foot development that is going to be happening over the course of the next eight to 10 years, which is going to be absolutely incredible. I think it's three times as big as the IFC is now. Incredible and significant for the economy and the region in, in terms of Massive. financial hub for the, um, for the Middle East. And I think it's like 6.4 million square foot worth of office space, which again, just shows, it just shows what they're trying to do. The, 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 you know, Sheikh Mohammed and, and everyone around them, what, what they're trying to do in this place. And it, listen, there's room for the poor. We, we had a podcast last week on, on commercial. It's not commercial. You know, there's no commercial whatsoever. Yes, in the IFC, you have to have a, a different license, but it just shows what these guys are trying to do. But the off-plan, listen, the off-plan at the moment is, is, is just so prominent and not just internally, but again, right across the board. Good. So before we wrap up projections for Q4, both secondary, off-plan, mortgage market, what do you think we're going to see? I'm excited. I'm excited in the sense of just the points that we spoke about before, um, with the decrease in a couple of things, whether it be viewings, whether it be a decrease slightly in, in leads generated. I'm intrigued to see what happens in the next three or four, um, three or four weeks, not even three or four weeks, but the next the next quarter. Is there a Mexican standoff between buyers and sellers and tenants and landlords alike? Are more people going to look further afield to get, and does that average price come down again? Who knows, but I'm, listen, like any quarter, it's it's always exciting, Paul, no matter what market we're in. Again, we said before about something's going to change sooner rather than later, whether it be now, whether it be in six months' time. Listen, I don't think it's, I still think we're, we're in a, a very buoyant and very um, aggressive market, which I like. But it's interesting to see what's, you know, obviously with these figures that we've been speaking about, it's interesting to see if there will be a slight change. Yeah, I agree. Obviously, we will bring you more on that. We'll do our monthly report uh, at the end of October as well. Our Q3 report is on the website, but also what is on the website is Data Hub. So we're speculating speculating about what's happening in certain areas. But if you want to know the houses around you, where you live, whether someone's moved in renting next door, whether you own in an area, you want to see what things are transacting at, go on Data Hub. You'll be able to see down to the unit number what's happening on your street in your community. So as well as us giving you information, you'll have live information it's updated daily from directly from Dubai Land Department so you can um, you can see and analyze all the data for yourself okay as always guys thanks for watching mark thank you very much and Cheers. we'll um, we'll catch you soon thank you